Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Common Network Protocols, Part 3. Today we're going to discuss some common protocols, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion about end-to-end -end security. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and dive into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing some common protocols. First up is FTP, that's File Transfer Protocol. It's a standard protocol for transferring files between computing systems. It does require user authentication, but it does not offer encryption. So it is not very secure. It is assigned to port 20 and to port 21, and it uses TCP as its layer 4 protocol. Surprisingly, SFTP, which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol, is more secure than FTP. It is a protocol for transferring files between computing systems. It does require user authentication and encryption by default. It's assigned to port 22 using TCP and UDP when SSH is used for the encryption. By default, it's assigned to port 990 when using TLS or SSL for encryption, and it still uses TCP and UDP as its layer for transport protocol. Then we have SCP, Secure Copy Protocol. It's a protocol for transferring files between computing systems, again, and it requires user authentication and offers encryption by default. It is assigned to port 22 and uses TCP and UDP as its layer 4 protocol. Then there is TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol. It transfers files between servers and clients. No user authentication is required and no encryption is in place. It's commonly used to upload and download network device configuration files. It's assigned to port 69 and uses TCP and UDP at layer 4 as its transport protocol. Then there is RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. It's used in Microsoft networks by Remote Desktop Connection and Remote Assistance to make remote connections to desktop systems. It's assigned to port 3389 by default, and it also uses TCP and UDP at layer 4. Now let's briefly discuss end-to-end -end security. And we're going to do that by talking about IPSEC, or Internet Protocol Security. It works at layer 3 and above of the OSI reference model. It's the most common suite of protocols used to secure a VPN connection. IPSEC can be used with the Authentication Header, or AH, protocol. AH only offers authentication services, but not encryption. Or IPSEC can be used with Encapsulating Security Payload, or ESP. ESP both authenticates and encrypts packets. It is the most popular method, but it does have more overhead than AH. Both Authentication Header Protocol and ESP will operate in one of two modes. The first mode is Transport Mode, which is commonly used between two devices, as in a host-to-host -host VPN. Or they can be used in Tunnel Mode, which is commonly used between two endpoints, as in a site-to-site -site VPN. IPSEC implements Internet Security Association and Key Management by default so it implements ISACAMP by default. ISACAMP provides a method for transferring security keys and authentication data between systems outside of the security key generating process. This is a much more secure process than other implementations. And there we have our brief discussion on end-to-end -end security. That concludes this session on Common Network Protocols Part 3. We started by discussing some common protocols and then ended with a brief discussion on end-to-end -end security. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.